Hi everyone, my name is Todd Cook and I want to thank everybody for coming out today. Um, I look around this room and I see a lot of the community leaders, volunteers. I think we're all a part of the same team. We're all being a part of the solution rather than part of the problem. And so we, we have more similarities in that. We all have goals, we all have ambitions, and we've all made mistakes. So we're also all here to celebrate peer support. And this all goes back to where it started, which is with a lady named Sherry Mead. She found herself going in and out of uh, mental hospitals all of her life. She was uh, told she was sick, she was labeled, said she was mentally ill. And she identified with this and it caused a lot of shame for her. She had to process that. Uh, so through her time in the mental hospital, she was told that she was gonna lose her kids. And one of the nurses told her that you got a choice. You can choose to be a mental patient for the rest of your life, or you can be a social worker. And maybe you can choose in the next 10 minutes, that's how she told me. Uh, so Sherry, Mead, she made that choice. She decided that she was gonna get out of that cycle. And she found that through honest, open dialogue with peers, that that became a very powerful way for them to actually work through that without having uh, a patient and a doctor relationship going on. It was similar to an AA program. So it, it, it allowed them to then be their own support system. And so we found through peer support what we have now in this in institution that we have very similar things going on. As people incarcerated, we've been labeled in a lot of different ways. Uh, I look in the, the group of guys that are a part of my peer support crew and there's 11 of us that are convicted of first degree murder. We've been labeled in a lot of different ways. Incorrigible, worst of the worst, scum of the earth. I think these guys transcend those, those comments. They overcome those labels. But I think it's important that it's understood that we do this as a voluntary basis. We are the leaders in this community in here. And we are the ones that are trying to strive for being a part of that solution. So with that, we would do that no matter where we're at, whether we're in an institution here, at work release, or in the community out there. I think that's a very important aspect to how we live in here. It's, it's similar to what we would do when, no matter what. Uh, so we, we talk about in peer support how we view life in our day-to-day -day life, however we see things. And some of that is through different lenses. And if you see things through a lens of fear, you always see what can go wrong versus what can go right. Peer support tries to look through lenses of hope and possibility. So we try to change that dialogue and look at what can we do to make something better in the future for both of us. This is a mutual relationship. It's not, there's no power dynamics in a peer support relationship. And so we try to look at how we can improve each other's lives by being there for one another through discussing our shared experiences. And if we focus on hope and possibility, I think we have a lot we can do and a lot we can accomplish together. So thank you. Uh, before I begin, I would just like to mention that we are, we are legion. And by that, I mean that all of us have shared experiences no matter our walk of life. Whatever you've been through, we share one thing in common. We can't say what that is right now because we don't know each other that well yet. I will tell you an experience of what IPS has given to me, uh, and that is the opportunity to have some com uh, conversations about mortality. And these are things that you don't normally talk about because it's a heavy topic. I will give you an example. <clears throat> I got in a conversation with a gentleman um, about suicide. And uh, this is a realistic thought inside prison, especially with people facing a lot of time. Uh, the wanting to give up rather than give in is, is realistic. However, uh, we continue to talk about this and it was a conversation that I was not prepared to have. I have uh, had thoughts in my past, as I'm sure everybody has, where, you know, just today's not my day. I'm just not having this. Uh, and I actually had to take this to uh, one of our facilitators because I was not prepared to have this conversation. Trusting in myself was not the same as trusting the conversation with you. But it was on the table. I had to bite down and go with it. Moving forward from that, it's had also given me an opportunity to talk to someone who is uh, being diagnosed with a disease right now and he's having a lot of trouble in his life. And to sit across the table from another human being, no matter what walk they come from, and have them invest in me and give me the opportunity to invest in them when their life is on the line is something that was provided to me through the training and the knowledge that I gained from this experience. I was placed in this position, couldn't tell you why. I don't know what my background in the institutional history gave me the opportunity to do this, but I am very, very grateful and I did not take this for granted by any means. We put a lot of work into this. 
We walk this yard every single day. And even though we go to segregation right now, please trust and believe that there is incidents every single day of our lives where we have conversations and pull guys over and get pulled over. We do, we do peer support every single day on the unit, on the yard, in the kitchen, at clubs. These are, as Mr. Cook said, these are the leaders of this community. We do this for a reason. We do this because this is our population, but we do this for you too because a lot of these gentlemen are going back to where you are. Even if we may not, we're trying to help prepare them along with a lot of the workers that are here to go back into the community. So I'm very grateful for this program. I'm glad it's here. I look forward to it growing and prospering, and I thank everybody who has a part of it. Thank you. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, we have worked pretty hard on this. Now, if you guys are at all like me, when you're preparing for your day, you set your alarm so that you can get up with enough time in the morning to do what you gotta do to get yourself ready to get your day started to go to work. Well, every now and then, when you've got something on your mind, something weighing heavily on you, something that's been eating at you, you wake up earlier than that alarm. Those are those dark times in the morning where you sit there and you've got nothing but time to think because you're the only one awake, the only one around. So you sit there and you think back on things. Sometimes you think about good things, but when you've got negative things weighing on you, sometimes it takes you to that bad place. You start thinking about all the regrets you have, the things that you did or didn't do, the things you should have done or maybe should not have done. Then you start thinking about the choices that you've made and how you could have done this better or that better. And I'll think about that amplified by having nothing but all day long in those dark moments. That's what some of these guys face down in segregation when they're isolated and alone. That's the first place that we were allowed. The first place that allowed peer support, that's the one place they did not allow their peer supporters to go. But here in Nebraska, we were allowed to go there first. These are the guys that need us the most. We need each other. Now think about having all those dark moments, and those negative thoughts and being sitting there with your the tapes playing over with all the mistakes you've made, all the things that you wish you hadn't have done. I wanted to be a better son. I wanted to be a better father. I wanted to be a better brother, friend. All that just lashing and going over your own mistakes because we are our own worst critics. Well, then all of a sudden you get a break in that. Somebody comes down, someone who is willing to listen to you, not speak at you, sometimes not even speak with you, just listen. You've got someone who actually has been in your situation someone who knows where you're coming from and whom you understand and know, they will not share what you're saying with anyone else, nor will they use these moments of vulnerability against you. It gives you the freedom to unburden yourself of some of these things that weigh heavily upon you. Once you can unburden these things and take the power away from them dark moments, gives you the energy and the motivation to get past them. It's been my honor as a part of this program to be a participant in the struggle from the mistakes of our past and those dark moments to a hope for a better tomorrow, a better future, a better version of ourselves. And the reason I say ourselves is because it's not something we do for someone else or something we do for ourselves, it's something we do together. One of the principles of this program is we do this together, all right? It's nothing about us without us. I don't go down there to talk to someone or to give them advice I go down there to listen, to have a conversation, to be a part of what this man's going through. And sometimes he gets to be a part of what I'm going through because sometimes it's me who needs to talk and he gets to listen. You've heard other guys talk about, hey, we even do this on the yard because man, this is important to us. It's something we believe in. We believe in the cause. We wanna make this better because here's the thing. We are all men of worth. In here, we are people of worth. I've joined other programs, including the dog program, all sorts of other things, because I myself, learning to understand myself, I realized I had to get away from my selfish point of view. I had to learn to get outside of my head to learn to care for and about someone and something other than myself. Being able to participate in daily life with other human beings is one part of that. And when men find themselves isolated and alone, like I said, with those dark moments, that can take you nothing to a dark place. But now you have guys who are willing to come and help you through this, to listen, to be a part of your life, to make a connection, to be a friend, to move with you into a better day. I'm honored to be a part of that, and I'm thankful. I'd like to do uh, three things. Uh, the first is to hand out some awards to some staff. Hey. The second, I would like to be the shortest speaker. 
And the third, I would like to convey what type of intent was behind these awards. They're not just a piece of paper. To us, they really mean something. The staff that are going to receive these awards were staff that went beyond what we feel and seen of other staff. There were staff that reached out to individuals to help them find a spiritual relationship with another man in a difficult time in their lives. There were staff that heard our calls. Hey, we need more seg time. We need to go visit these men and do what we do. And they answered that by, hey, we found some slots over here for you. In my job, my supervisor, I tell, I have to leave for a couple hours so I can go to a job that doesn't pay me. And when I see that expression on her face and its encouragement, it says, go do what you have to do in your community. I really feel that. Tucker? With this program particularly, it just, it, it has more of an impact coming from their peers, from people that they trust, that they've known for years. Bernard Long. We're not licensed mental health practitioners and we're, we're not social workers. We don't have the degrees to be telling people how to live their lives, but what we can do is be listeners and support and, like I said, provide that hope to, to them. Man, <laughs> means a lot. It's a recognition that I've done something positive. You know, uh, you're being recognized for something you've done that's good. A lot of us in here throughout our lives, we've been recognized over and over again for the bad or horrible things that we've done. But this time I've worked hard and Accomplish something good. Smith. This is a great day. This is truly a great day. But we've got something that's got international recognition. You've got something that has international recognition. I am really excited about where we can go with this. Danny Schneider. Glenn Branch. John Russ. Juan Lano. Lauren Jones. Michael Anderson. Lamont Arnold. I have two consecutive life sentences plus 30, 40 for weapons. This is gonna be my home. It's up to me to decide, do I wanna make this community better or do I wanna become one of the people that bring it down and, and drive it to the dirt? And when those around me see me and they think, hey, he's got that amount of time. He's not supposed to be that collective guy. He's not supposed to be that ray of light. And they say, hey, he's trying to do something. That's an acknowledgement that I might be doing something right, finally, in my life, with my life.